Hello and welcome back to the Nuts and Bolts of Elder Law and Estate Administration, sponsored by the New Jersey State Bar Association's um, Institute for Continuing Legal Education in New Jersey. Now we've already discussed the interview of the client for estate planning. Um, next thing that you typically discussed is the bill, and the um, you know. To, it's a good idea to provide something in writing that sets forth what someone will do. Let's say the Rules of Professional Responsibility, RPC 1 colon 5 dash 6, require that a fee agreement be in writing. So, um, something can be as simple as a fill in the blank form setting forth what the charge is going to be. Let's say, and the payment can be re made that day. Let's say, uh, for professionals, it's a good practice not to begin work until they're paid. That way, you know you have a client, and the client knows they have an attorney. When to sign the documents? Well, in our office, we give them a date that day, usually three weeks in the future. Some people want to think about things. Well, we tell them, listen, it's a call to action. They put up doing these documents for years and years and years. We next, after we're paid, let's say... Uh, we go over with the client the uh, the signing, and then we prepare the documents. And we have a, will, a, a, a form letter that the will draft is enclosed. We again tell them what the signing date is. So we've told them the signing date. On the will bill, we give them this, uh, we tell them, we write down the signing date, and there's a follow-up letter. And if I have the time, I like to call them up and um, just remind them. Now our will draft letter out sets forth if there's any changes any errors in the document or or things that they've decided to change then sometimes the best thing to do if it's something minor is take out a blue pen mark up whatever page and you know you know put it back in the mail um, you know to us uh, fax it to us this way we know what needs to be changed if there's something more complicated we need to bring the person back in but we don't want to take uh, corrections over the phone because sometimes that leads to problems competency competency let's see here um, competent it's important that attorneys and professionals do do their job you do your job there's no complaints no, uh, no one's getting sued. Now, again, the question goes to on ethics, who is the client? Um, I recall when I first started out, I'd say my office gets a call. And, uh, you know, it turns out the son wanted, said the dad wants to have a will of have attorney deed. Um, I go to the house. Well, it turns out the son never even told the father that an attorney was coming over. The father didn't have any idea. So, let's see. My office and many attorneys do what's called house calls. Let's see. Let's see. If someone is uh, disabled, can't get around. But we want a couple things first. Um, number one, I want to know from uh, the, their doctor saying the person is competent to do whatever document the family member is discussing. Whether that's a power of attorney, a deed, a will, living will, any other document. And then also I want to talk to the person ahead of time just to make sure that's what the person wants. Someone could be competent, but what the one family member says over the phone might not be what the other person wants. And even if someone has a power of attorney um, over, let's say, a parent, I'm not going to do a deed unless that's what the family member, you know, the parent wants if they're, if they're, if they're competent. Other issues to look at is undue influence in confidential relationships. Um, and that was discussed in the Stockdale decision by the New Jersey Supreme Court. Now, we've, I've, I've won over power of, I mean the um, will preparation, powers of attorney. Same thing, we prepare the document and um, we explain to the client that a power of attorney is effective either right away, you know, durable power of attorney, or effective only upon disability. Occasionally someone will ask, well, what's the difference? I goes, well, the difference is, if it's effective right away, they can steal your money right away. 
If it's effective only upon disability, someone has to wait for someone to become disabled. And um, we also discussed that in the power of attorney, it's going to set forth gift-giving powers. We warn our different clients not to use forms on the internet because if you use a form on the internet, the banks don't necessarily have to honor them. A form typically done by an attorney makes reference to the PL 1991 in which the banks have to honor the power of attorney if it has specific language. Um, sometimes the clients, like uh, uh, we explain to the clients uh, um, that the documents prepared should be HIPAA compliant. Um, now, HIPAA is not a big, uh, big animal in African rivers. You know, the Health Information Privacy uh, you know, Protection Act um, bars disclosure of medical records. Therefore, the powers of attorney and living wills should have some kind of language that permits doctors to provide information to the person that they've selected. Living wills, advanced directives, medical decisions. You know, sometimes people assume that they have those documents will never assume anything. Um, and we recommend advanced planning because it takes away the stress from the family if someone's all of a sudden, if someone's in a hospital and um, there's problems. Now, in our next edition, um, we're going to talk about the day of the will signing. For other information on wills and elder law, um, go to www.njlaws.com, that's njlaws.com, or centraljerseyelderlaw.com. Other information, call the Law Office of Kenneth for Cameron, 732-572-0500. Thank you.